Welcome to ANN in depth. Today we are in Brazil. I wish that you could be here with me, but you cannot. Um, so you're going to have to depend on this podcast to understand what's happening. We are in the middle of the first Adventist Technology Summit. As it will come as no surprise to you, the General Conference is focusing on technology for mission. It will redefine what we do and how we do it. And we're trying to find out exactly what the best way of using technology for mission is. So we called the whole world together, all the technologists to come together and, and discuss this. Now the building that is here, we'll try to bring you some images of the building as well, is IATech, that's the Institute, the Adventist Institute of Technology, uh, where a couple of hundred people work to build technology that helps the Adventist Church or supports the Adventist Church in fulfilling its mission. And with me right now in this special episode of ANN in Depth is Jatesh. Yeah. Welcome to ANN in Depth, Jatesh. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You work at Hope Channel. What exactly do you do there? Yes, yeah, so I work at Hope Channel International. And I am in a new uh, position that's never been done before. It's called the Technology Projects Manager. Okay, we'll come to that in a moment. Sure. Uh, Hope Channel International um, is part of the Hope Channel Network. Yes. And uh, coordinates the network, in fact. And there are 80 channels around the world. Yes. Tell us more about the network itself. Sure. So um, a part of uh, the GC mandate, a part of Hope Channel International, like you mentioned, a lot of people don't know but we're not just one local Hope Channel. We're actually the coordinating entity of all the 80 plus channels that we have. What that means is helping them in their mission. Are we providing them the right tools? Are we providing them the right service? Are we checking in to see what they're doing, how they're, how they're growing in their ministry for their people, for their culture, in their languages? So what can we do to provide that? So, hmm? And more recently, Hope Channel International has invested a lot of time and effort and resources on building technology that will help the network yes. to do their job more efficiently. Um, tell us more about that. Sure. So we were trying to find a way for many years. Um, how can we be of support, right? We're so far away. We can constantly fly and go and try to give seminars. But is that really helping? Is that the, is that the goal of helping uh, uh, um, their mission grow and them actually get something going into their in moving forward into the future? So then we started to do more development and thinking, hey, we can come up with, with platforms that are actually mission effective, um, but they need to be designed for mission. There's many platforms out there that you can use um, that are more geared towards marketing or selling this product or selling this product, and the a cost is exponential. So if you're a small channel or even just a small entity or network just trying to grow, you don't have the budget because you can't afford the technologies. Let's be honest, right? That's how it goes why not create technology that's for mission? But the, tech, the mission is based on the needs of each individual network. How can you compare one culture from one side to another culture on the other side and say it's gonna work unless you have a conversation and check in with them, build a relationship and say, you know, after gauging all of this information, spending time, whether it be via Zoom or in person, now I know maybe 60 or 70% want this specific need. So why don't we go to our development team who has helped create all of the software that we use and make it into um, something that will be beneficial to those 60, 70 percent and move it up on the ladder to make it happen. So that's our strategy of what we've been doing in terms of making sure that we're providing the needs to the network. In the past, mm -hmm. there was the philosophy, if we build it, mm -hmm. they will come. Like, like we know what they need. We're just going to build it. It's going to be great and people will come. Mm -hmm. um, that does not work anymore. This is, how do you discover what people need mm -hmm. as you develop to help them? Great question. And my easy answer is, which everyone always tries to make it complicated, build relationships. My, um, so everyone is like, okay, we need to plan a trip to one of the 82 countries. I said, do you know how many trips it's going to take to, to go and meet with each one of them? It's a lot of work and resources to do that. There's something during the pandemic that was a blessing, and it's called Zoom. You can have people didn't believe, is it possible to create a, like a relationship through Zoom, just Zooming with someone? I've practiced it now because I have met with all 82 via Zoom. 
I've spent hours with them, just me, one-on-one -on -one with them, asking normal questions. How are you? How's your family? What's the culture like over there? What's the weather like over there? What are your goals and aspirations? What are the challenges that you have? Just simple questions. No agenda, nothing, nothing for me to gain from it but a relationship. From, that, from sticking to that model, it builds trust because they, they come to find out, man, I think, I really think he just wants to help. I, think, I don't think he <laughs> wants anything else. <laughs> I don't think there's, a, there's money involved. It's, it's actually going to help us if we just keep communicating with one another. So that's how it started. <laughs> a few weeks ago, Jitesh, we were in South Africa together yeah. for the leadership convention where mm -hmm. all the leaders of all 80 channels come together. And I remember you standing at the door and greeting everybody with a hug as they came in, as they came out. Yeah. I, I think that you have a particular gift for relationships, and that's probably why um, you find yourself doing what you do. Because you. if relationships is at the core of it, mm -hmm. um, you do that really, really well. Thank you. Thank you. Hope.cloud was born. Mm -hmm. It's a platform that has many other platforms inside it or, or features that can help. Yes. Tell us about the main ones. Okay, so, and hope.cloud, the best way to say, because I remember my job, a part of my job in this position is to, is technology is complicated or it can become very complicated. My job was specifically to come in, not being a technical guy, was to make things simple, easy to understand. So. Because if you have a developer trying to talk to the client and trying to talk about a product, wow, it's like different languages. Even for me, it's still different languages. Even I tell them, hey guys, could you just say that in like normal words or, or spell out these acronyms because I don't know what they mean. I'm just a normal guy, you know? So they break down, to, oh, for Jitesh, we need to explain what the breakdown is. That's the normal now, so, which I love because it helps me learn. Yes. With learning that way, then I take the simplified version and then I'm able to communicate that. So in, for hope.cloud, I've come up with a simple way to understand. Well, tell us. One of them is, think of hope.cloud as a universe, okay? And in the universe, there are worlds, just like we have in our solar system, okay. right? One of those worlds is we start with Mission Passport, right? That's one of our services that we have. The best way to describe Mission Passport is if you're creating any kind of content, doesn't matter what kind of content is, a podcast, a show, a documentary, some form of content that's coming to an organization. Is it reaching the audience that it's meant to reach? Is it designed that way? Is it checking off these boxes? Or is it just some idea somebody from the top gave you and it doesn't have any data or research to back whether it's actually going to make an impact? Which means we're not spending our resources correctly, right? Okay. Mission Passport is to help Ask those questions. Hey, is, is it? And let's talk about it. Let's talk about, is this going to reach the audience that we want to reach? So in the Hope.Cloud universe, mm -hmm. if you visit the planet mm -hmm. dedicated to developing ideas, Mission Passport, that planet, is going to help you conceptualize your idea, put measurable indicators in it, and give, I suppose, administrators mm -hmm. uh, the tools they need to approve funding and to measure the effectiveness of it. Perfect way to say it, in a simple way. Simple, easy to use way. Excellent, okay, yes. what other world do you have on it? From Mission Password, we go to the world of Jetstream. And Jetstream has now branched into many areas, but Jetstream Studio is what we focus on the most. This is our number one request from the network. How do I, how can I stream my content? Whatever content it is, how do I stream it? Oh, well, we have Facebook, we have YouTube. We start building all these different platforms and we have to start making content for each one of these platforms and having one person or multiple people to keep paying attention to all of it. It's a lot of work to do, especially if your whole team is one person or a half a person, meaning a volunteer or part-time. It's difficult to do, it's hard to manage. Why can't we create something that will help them to send out that signal faster? And that's what the whole concept of Jetstream Studio came, we came up with was let's create something that allows them to, in less than a minute, no complications, stream on five different platforms live at the same time. So you can be on your website, you can be on Facebook, you can be on YouTube, all at the same time through one place. It's a one-stop shop. You don't need to go into YouTube to check if it's working. You don't need to go into Facebook. Once it's sent Got out it. of Jetstream, it's connected. 
So that's Jetstream Studio. Yes. Okay, what else? We also have Jets within the Jetstream world, we have Jetstream stock. So how are we, where are we getting stock footage for in order to use in our ministry, right? Stock sure. footage is very common, videos or pictures. And then, man, I go and look into what it costs. It costs so much money to have this yeah. stock footage, yes, right? Yes, it does. We don't have the budget for it. So we're just going to avoid it and not use it and be stuck. How about we create something to help with that, where it's one place and we'll take care of the licensing for you. And all you have to do, sign up and you get access to that. And let's take it a step further. Let's incorporate Adventist um, stock footage, Adventist gear, because we're, let's face it, we're Adventists, right? Yes, we're gonna yes, need yes, Adventist yes. footage. That's where Adventist exchange, media exchange came into, into play and they're integrated into Jetstream stock. So it's not just one uh, stock footage area, you're getting multiple in one space, one stop shop, you don't need to go anywhere else to do it. When I first heard about this, mm -hmm. Uh, Hope Channel was asking that uh, GC Communication, where I work, mm -hmm. that we partner with Hope Channel. Yeah. And, and I, I, I knew also that Adventist World Radio was partnering mm -hmm. to provide to their uh, studio managers and producers yes. uh, the opportunity to have top quality stock. And it's not cheap, nope. but we jumped at the chance. And this is a phenomenal way of collaborating to allow the creatives around the world to create great content absolutely uh, using and we're, we are practicing sam synergy right that's right but you're using this word constantly Where, where's yeah. the proof of this synergy this is so one of this them. is it right here yeah. we, we are so thankful you were able to just jump on you didn't even hesitate what do you need that's right let's make this happen we're all on the same team let's work together it was a very quick conversation wonderful amazing conversation <laughs> quick <laughs> okay what other planets yes. are there so from the jet stream planet we move to um what we call uh, our website and apps so that's more geared towards hope channel but it's a very important right because you want to stream this footage or you want to have a place where your content is consumed i don't have a, i don't have a website you'd be surprised you think oh everybody has websites it's easy to get a website it's actually more difficult. Just getting a website is half the battle, maybe not even half, 20%. Having someone to run it, customize it, sure. make it easy to understand, be able to have the content, make it appealing. It's a lot of work to do, especially if you don't have knowledge or the resources for it. What we came up with is our own website template that you say, hey, I need a website. We are happy to help you with that. All you need to do is go, we'll give you a quick demo you join the website and we'll change it to fix everything for you, for your area, and all the templates and everything is built out. You can even change the front-facing portion of it, which you don't have to get into the back end and no coding and all this, just simple stuff. And events coming up, you can move that event to the top of your page so that people know, hey, this is what's coming up. You don't need to go and talk to a developer to do that. So the website is easy for them to adopt no issues in, in making it look beautiful and for their culture, sure. right? The other one is the app, same exact format. Apps design is already there. You just say you need it and you have an app with all the right templates, all the right branding, and it has your name on it and has all your content on it. You can upload that to whatever platform you want. Anyone you want, yes. That's really cool. I didn't yes. know about the web and app thing. <laughs> yes. Nice. Then the last one in there, the last world, I have to finish because we're almost done with the world. So the last one is <laughs> hope.study. So hope.study okay. is the final world that we've been working on. And our goal there was to create a beautiful, interactive Bible study. Sounds easy, right? Sounds, hey, must be, there must be plenty of those out there. In reality, there are not, actually. It's, um, we, there are Bible platforms out there, but are, is there one that you create every ounce of it, every detail of it to be what you want it to be. Like every ounce means you can get your graphic designer and they would have the best experience on there because yes, yes. they get to use all of their skills in creating a very beautiful, interactive, it feels like you're talking to somebody platform. Yes. The idea of Hope.Study is to also create a follow-up process. So once the Bible study course is easy to click on, what's the follow-up? is building a relationship with that person. So there's something called the mentor app that we've created a mentor process where you have a real person that connects with you after you finish that and chats with you, has a conversation with mm -hmm. you. And maybe in that conversation says, hey, we have a small group that meets once a week. 
if you'd like to join, you know, we're happy to have you. So the idea is to not just have a Bible study, but have a church, have a group, have an organization built behind it to support it. So it becomes a digital person into a real person that you have a relationship with. Sure. Yeah. Yatesh, mm -hmm. what's next for, for, in your view, as you interact with various Hope channels everywhere? Um, what's next for the interaction that you have with the channels that are small? Mm -hmm. How do you think what you are developing at Hope Channel International based on their needs, mm -hmm. as they adopt it, mm -hmm. what change do you think it will really make for them? I Great question, Sam. And I, I, in fact, I, I wish I could just show you all the success stories of these small channels. I have all of them where just adopting one, uh, one of them is um, Malawi, Hope Channel Malawi, small, small country and small team. And they were have they are a brilliant team, just great level. But the technology was limiting them, you know, with their resources that they have there. I was able to give them a Jetstream demo, which was the streaming platform services and media library where they can store their content as well. Once I trained them and used them, right, they, they got a demo, they started using it. The first email we got back for them was, Jitesh, uh, Jetstream Studio has changed our lives. It, it is, we can never be the same again. And wow. it's all because of Jetstream Studio. So whatever limitations they had, they were able to do. They even helped us to create new ways of using it because they wanted to use it in very creative ways like, Jitesh, we want to go live through the studio from on site, but I don't know how we do that. I'm not the tech side of it. I understood the problem, talked to our development team because we have that ability to do that. We developed the process for them to be on site and be able to relay that to the studio and then relay that on their satellite. So. It was a new feature we came up with because of their need. They were just communicating and made it happen. So for them, once that happened, they said, we can do anything now. We don't feel limited at all by mission. We actually feel hopeful that we can do more and more as we move forward. Fantastic. Jatesh, thank you very much for joining us at ANN In Depth. Thank you, Sam, for having me. <laughs> and thank you for listening so far or watching this on YouTube. Uh, we are everywhere that podcasts are distributed. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then you can also comment uh, under this video with whatever question you want to ask Jatesh. He will be there answering those questions as well. And if you have any thoughts of how to improve whatever it is that they're doing, I'm sure Jatesh will be all ears uh, along with his team. Again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you or you will see me, however that works, next week. <laughs>